Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University and House of X, issue number two. You know what I hate about this cover? Is that there's not a whole lot of room for Jonathan Hickman to sign this and say, you're welcome for this effing awesome comic book that you will remember forever because this is where he genuinely changes the entirety of the X-Men. I know it's a lot to write, but maybe they got one of those blank covers. I just didn't notice it. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah. Holy crap, the hype is real. Everything has changed. We now understand how the X-Men are technically being rebooted and how the hell, tell me how, this psychopath, Hickman, does it through Moira McTaggart. Ah! Oh. Let's get talking about who made this comic book. We'll tell you a little bit of something or other about the comic book itself, all right? So we got Jonathan Hickman as the writer, Pepe Larez doing the art, uh, Marte Gracia doing the color art, VCs Clayton Cowles on letters, the design is Tom Mueller, cover artist Pepe Larez and Marte Gracia, and um, yeah, some cover artists, Alan Davis and Edgar Delgado, another by Mike Huddleston, another by Sarah Pacelli and Dean White, and another still by Yasmin Putree. All right. House of X2, The Uncanny Life of Moira X. X-Men were created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, but they were radicalized by Jonathan Mother F. and Hickman, dude. Listen, this is a spoiler review. There's nothing else I can do but give you spoilers. I think for like the entire run, this entire uh, 12 issue run, you know, six and six, House of X and Powers of 10. Bruh, bruh. Check this out. So we got Moira McTaggart lived a very fruitful life. When she was younger, she got sick. And then when she uh, got a little old, you know, the next day she was somehow better. And then she went about her life and she was cool and everything was fine and bang, she died at about 74 years old or so. Yeah, that was it. She never met any mutants, never met Professor X, never met anything. Just a nice and happy life that anyone would consider a pretty damn good life. And then when she was reborn to live that entire life all over again, but with the complete and total memory, I'm talking like freaking, um, uh, not Frank Miller, um, Frank Herbert Dune level of... Uh, being conscious, being awake and aware in the womb, in utero, and knowing your past life. Dude, I'm just saying. She decides to try and do some experiments on her own and learn a couple things. And then her third life happens where she repeats the exact same process, having full knowledge of everything that happened prior and being able to learn a bunch of new things also. And then the fourth life and the fifth life. And the dude, she has a whole bunch of lives and it's sick. And we get to experience these. At one point, she meets uh, Destiny of the, um, were they the Freedom Fighters? No, they weren't the Freedom Fighters. Whatever. Uh, uh, what do you call it? It was um, Mystique. It was Destiny. It was Pyro. You know what I'm saying? I imagine um, uh, just whatever, man. All right. It was this team. And she winds up at one point being burned alive by Pyro slowly so she can remember what this kind of a death feels like. Because while she can live multiple lives, she can relive her life over and over and just keep on re, uh, reincarnating. The fact of the matter is, Destiny can see all of those lives because she can see the future. Sick. Moira takes what, what uh, Destiny has to tell her. And she uses this knowledge in as many positive ways as she can knowing that she's only got but so many tries at this. Because if she dies before she hits puberty, then the mutant gene doesn't kick in, and she won't be able to, I don't know, be reincarnated. If you die before your mutant, if she dies before her mutant gene kicks in, she's dead. It's, it's funny to think about the reason why she was sick was because the mutant gene was taking over, and when she all of a sudden got better, it's because the mutant gene took effect. She didn't even know what a mutant was in her first life. I love how this works. I love the timeline that they give in this of all 10 of her lives just going forward. We, we get to see that here depicted excellently. I, I'll be able to find it at some point or another. I'm, I'm certain of it. I'm, I'm damn certain of it. It's, it's probably back here someplace. And, and when I find it, I'm like, aha, aha. I, found it the many lives of moira x and we see the timeline and we see all of these things but we see all this stuff but we, we, we did say 10 lives right 
He saw 10 lives. 5, 4, listen man, I don't think you got to be a, an electrical engineer to have your math skills up that you only see 9. But down here it says 10. Maybe it's just a mistake from the beginning, right? Because, I mean, this this thing could be a little bit confusing, the way that it whoa, all circles around that that one point right there. You, year 13, the mutant manifestation, everything's the same or so until right about there when all of a sudden they all diverge at that point. But I'm still only seeing nine lives. Her sixth life is gone. We don't know what it is. Oh, they talk about all the lives in there, not just on the timeline. But you might notice they go from five to seven. Y'all catch that? This is... Dude. Okay. I think it's about time. You know what I'm saying? Every so often somebody comes along and is like, you know, Hickman isn't that great. My friend. Shut up! I swear to God, I will freaking knock your head off if I ever see you. Ah! Anyway, I think it's about time that we all erected a giant statue of Jonathan Hickman. Because clearly, his mutant power is being awesome. <laughs> and, and, and telling these incredible stories that just get our mind going... Because wow. Wow. Nah, bro. Nah. Also, you know, I'm I'm kind of in, enamored with the um, the ciphers in the back, right? So you know, the curious life of, lives of Moira X. Next issue. Yep, next issue. Huh? I wonder what that is. I had to do the cipher. Oh, and um, didn't realize it had so many colored pens. Remember, this is the new one that I found last time. I think I did. I find two. Yeah, I found two new ones. But here I found one new one. Why? I found the letter Y. Hey, there we go. And this one. Yeah. Get over here, you bitch. This one says, this is what you do. This is what you do. Also, I'm a dumbass. So in the previous, um, uh, review. I forgot. I I realized what the, uh, the the things at the bottom were. Remember, um, I put questions that this thing and this thing. All right. Didn't know what they were. I couldn't find the cipher for it. It's like one goes this way, one goes this way. But there's a lot of things where it's like you know, there's this and then there's the upside down version of it. There's a bunch of you know, there's this one and there's one where it's facing the other way. And they both have different letters, right? So I was wondering like what these two things were. Uh, I. I solved it when I did the uh, the ha the powers of ten issue number one video last week, but I forgot to mention it. Those are actually bookends. Um, you'll notice that all of these ciphers, it's six letters, next line six letters, next line six letters, whatever. It's just going goes, and then when you don't have six for the final line, whatever is left, they just give you those, but then they put those two little bookend parts at the end to to you know let you know, hey. I don't have six letters. This is where it ends. That's the bookend. That's what that actually is. Um, yeah. Let me just show you the bookends again really quick. So bookend, bookend. And only, yeah, two letters on the bottom. Yo, this just keeps on getting better and better. And I'm in love with these books. Y'all need to grab these things. Yeah, this is the one that I was talking about. This is the one that everybody on Twitter, the the, the readers, or excuse me, the, the other writers for Marvel have gotten the advanced copy of this like two weeks ago before we even got issue number one. They were already reading issue two and they were like, oh my God. They literally decided, Hickman literally decided to make everything based around Moira McTaggart. None of us would have thought to do something like that. And man, the dude's a genius. I, I don't know. Like, every time you read one of his books, you're just like, the guy's a genius. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Looking forward to it. Also, a couple things coming up. The uh, You guys are interested in the uh, the fall of, uh, what do you call it, Fallen Angels? You're looking for all that stuff? Go and check out my recent podcast from last Saturday. It's here on YouTube. Uh, just type in podcast number 125, Comic Book University. In the uh, around the second half, you'll see my uh, interview that I did. Uh, Brian Edward Hill called in from L.A. and we had ourselves a good conversation. And he he gave 
the best he could for spoilers, but more than he's given any place else because he's freaking awesome about uh, the work that he's going to be doing with uh, with um, Jonathan Hickman in the future, specifically with the uh, Fallen Angels comic book that he's going to be working on after all of these these 12 issues are done. And uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, the origins of him originally working with uh, Hickman, uh, you know, deciding, hey, let's let's do something together. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot. So podcast number 125, Comic Book University. You'll see it there. Anyway, guys, I'm done. Holy crap. Mind blown. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.